Uh, thank you all for joining. We have a fantastic group of people sitting here to my left. Uh, we got Joshua London, Gabe Geller, Ari Loxweiser. I couldn't have put together a better group of people to try these wines. And the wines that we will be trying are the wines that we recently imported from Israel, our Garage Winery series. These are fantastic, fantastic wines. You must try them. There's something here for everyone. These are wines that are from micro producers. They're not bottling a lot of wines. Uh, we got 17 different wines from five wineries. We're going to try them all here today. You'll get expert opinions from three different people and, of course, my novice opinion. And uh, then you get to choose what you want to drink based on uh, what you hear here today. So stay tuned and uh, we're going to give it a whirl. We're going to start with the Gita Laban. We all uh, got our glasses here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and taste that and everybody will say what they think. But hopefully we won't have group think here. Everybody can say whatever they want. Whatever, whatever it tastes like to you is what it tastes like. Right, Ari? That's, that's yeah. true. True. That right. is true. I agree. So since I'm all the way on this side, maybe I'll just start since you already gave me a little nod of it. So this is a Chardonnay Levant, um, a 2000 and 16? Yeah, 16. 16. 16. Um, the cool characteristic about this wine um, is that there's no malolactic fermentation, which basically means is that the wine is fresh, the, the wine does not have that butteryness to it, it doesn't have as much of like a uh, popcorn type flavor, but it has a really awesome fresh mineral feel to it, fresh mineral smell, um, and a lot of like green afternoon to me. It's unusual. Actually, it's not the first time I tasted it. I tasted this wine, uh, tasted this wine uh, about three months ago. Uh, when I first tasted it, I was actually surprised because uh, it didn't smell uh, like Chardonnay. I think this time it does smell like Chardonnay, but it's still different. You don't get as much uh, butter, cream, uh, and oakiness as uh, you usually do on uh, those uh, barrel aged uh, Chardonnay. Uh, there is that uh, really mineral uh, uh, feel to it. Uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting wine, it's a very different Chardonnay than uh, uh, all the wines uh, that we see uh, usually uh, on the market. Well, this one's completely new to me, so uh, <laughs> I had no expectations per se. Um, so I, it definitely smells like uh, Chardonnay. Um, the, uh, it's interesting, so I was getting some initial oak uh, tones right on the nose. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've, had, I've actually tasted it, but um, it smelled, it, it didn't strike me as some of the oak bombs that I normally get out of Israel, um, but uh, uh, it's a little bit more delicate. Uh, frankly, it smells like we really tasty, so. All right, go ahead. Great acidity. Yeah, Great acidity. that was really, really nice, and that was really nice, it's really incredible. And um, in terms of the taste profile, um, we're getting like some green apple there. You were just mentioning that. Before. Yeah, so I'm getting green apple. I'm getting almost like um, uh, like a really slaty character, a mineralness to it. Um, on the mouth, I'm also getting a little bit more green fruit, like a gooseberry type of flavor to it as well. Um, but it's really nice, really enjoyable. Um, I don't think I think that's high, which is what you want in a white wine like this. It's crisp, it's refreshing. It's cold, but it's not uber cold. But we're not getting the flavors out of it, and it's it's freaking great. Yeah, now that I've tasted it, um, it's really yummy. It's uh, uh, this is the way Israeli really wines, I think, should be embracing things, which is hot climate, east, eastern Mediterranean. So it is the high acidity. It helps keep it uh, refreshing, crisp. Uh, in this case, it's well balanced, and you get a good concentration of um, the different components. Flavors are there. It is Chardonnay. It does have other aspects to it, which is interesting. Mineral. Um, a, a little bit of that kind of gooseberry thing, which is interesting, um, and uh, and I think this actually would be really uh, not just food friendly, but Israeli cuisine friendly, which is something that Israeli wines don't yeah. traditionally you could do in it, but that's the new trend. Uh, this I like this. This is uh, what is this retail for? This retails <laughs> for about uh, thirty four ninety nine. On sale now for thirty four ninety nine. So, but definitely, you're you're getting what you're what you're paying for here is like the handcrafted, uh, you know, like the delicate the amount of care that's been taken to produce this. And it's small batch. Uh, we got one hundred eighty bottles. Not a lot by by any stretch. There's some wines we sell one hundred eighty bottles of a day yeah. or in one order. So, like this is really small production. And um, I've tasted this before as well when it wasn't as cold as it is now. And I think that you will find some other flavors uh, showing through when it's when it's not as cold. Um, but yes, like I said, the, the acid is nice, it's, it's just a well-balanced wine. 
uh, really refreshing, and it's, and it's definitely unique, uh, yeah. you know, for, yeah. for a shark game, yeah. so. All right, we're here, here we are, gonna try the Gito Ori. This is a phenomenal blend of Syrah, Merlot, Petite Syrah, Petite Verdot, very interesting stuff going on, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a try and see what the panel says. So right off the bat on the nose, I'm getting, uh, as Gabe was just saying before we start, well, <laughs> you get a lot of the Petite Verdot, like right smack in your face immediately. Um, what that means is that I'm getting um, some green to it, um, almost like a sagey urban quality. Yeah, to it. exactly. You get the green, but you get also the, the black fruit, mm -hmm. like the, the tar, black right, blackberries, black currants. Mm -hmm. I'm also uh, getting a little licorice on this one as well. Aspect um, to it. Yeah. Also some spiciness from the Syrah, the, 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 the freshly cracked pepper. But there's also oriental spices, uh, like uh, oregano a little bit, uh, herbs. It's actually really fun to smell. There's a lot, a lot of different yeah, there's flavors. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of thing going, of thing going on, and you know, the, it's the type of aromas that you would not expect all together in the same wine. Yeah, there really is a lot going on. I, um, I'd be curious to know, you know, speak with the, the winemaker, see what his vision was for the wine. Um, it, it does strike me as having a little bit of a, uh, a bifurcated character, but uh, it seems to want to be trying to do a lot at once. And I don't know that it's successful in that respect, but it's it's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so as Gabe was talking about the aromas, I was tasting it, and definitely you get that nice cracked pepper. Um, you know, the, some of the herbs I, I wasn't I wasn't pulling through on the on the palate, but uh, that, it's it's an interesting. You get the fruit, you get the pepper, which is not really. I mean, obviously the syrah can give you a bit of spice, but like to have it in that contrast. Um, was definitely interesting. I love salt and pepper chip. This salt, salt, vinegar, salt, and pepper, cracked pepper. Uh, so like those are flavors I love. I love this wine. Yeah. Um, it's it's nice and easy to drink with a lot of flavor going on in there. And I think there's more pepper in the mouth than almost. I think I got more in the mouth than I got in the nose. Um, but the mouth isn't overpowering. The alcohol isn't too high. Um, fairly fairly finish. long finish. Yeah, it's a pretty long yeah. finish too. I think a lot of the finish that's coming through is the pepper actually, which is why I think I'm mm -hmm. getting it so much in the mouth now that I'm talking about it. Um, but it's not out of balance. It's, it's structured nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the pepperiness is really a nice, it's actually a nice uh, sort of counterpoint to the fruit. It, it's interesting the way it's done. It's not what you'd expect, but it's a nice effect on the palate. And I just have actually a little bit impressed that they've managed to keep um, the, the sort of the, the body, the viscosity, fresh. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not heavy. Initially on the nose, I figured it would be a little bit more like oil on the, on the palate. It's not at all. It's actually very light for what it is, and um, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty well balanced. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. it's, not, it, it's not. It's not. overripe. It's clearly a new ore. It's fruit forward, uh, but it's not. Uh, it's not overripe at all. Uh, it's a very pleasant, very easy drinking wine, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Here we are, we're going to try the Gito Gili. The Gito Gili is a blend of Petite Syrah and Syrah. So this is also a bit of your Mediterranean style blend. Um, the last wine we tried also had some Syrah and Petite Syrah, but this just has the two varietals in it. We're going to go ahead and see what the panel says. So let's give this a swirl. They like uh, gaminess to it a little bit, like kind of like that you get from a Syrah. Maybe a touch of barnyard, a touch of bread, maybe just a little bit, which I don't think is a bad thing. But um, in terms of the fruit, the typical black fruit that you would get from a Syrah, a petite Syrah, you know, black currants, um, black peppers, some spiciness. Um, yeah, it's nice, nice, nice. You actually do not get really a uh, barnyard. I do get some uh, some other uh, interesting aromas here. Uh, I would say more like uh, leather and uh, roasted meat, which is not so surprising uh, coming from uh, uh, Syrah, Petit Syrah. Uh, those are usually uh, typical uh, descriptors for uh, those varieties, especially from Israel. Um, I, get, uh, I get some ripe, uh, some ripe red fruit, a little bit of blackberries also. I mean, let's taste it actually. I, I, I agree. Um... Yeah, the fruits. I, I'm also not getting one here. There is that savoriness. I don't know if I'd call it leather necessarily, but it's... Um, Probably like gamey for me, that savoriness. Yeah, gamey. Josh, yeah, ga yeah. Gaminess. Yeah, there's a gaminess. Yeah, um, it's appealing. It's, uh, I mean, the gaminess quotient. Um, uh, it, it's working, I mean, it's... This one, the, the, I, I, can, I can have a sense of what the winemaker was going for. I think it works. It kind of coheres very nicely. Um, a little more, more of what I would expect anyway, given the varietals, and 
it just it, you know once again it, even though it's heavier on the palate than the last it's um it's not overly heavy it's not yeah, you know, yeah, but it's, it's, it's really full body. Yeah. There's good acidity to 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 to, to balance okay, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got that ripe fruit also uh, on the palate. Uh, really ripe. Uh, I get I get that spiciness also. The, the Arabs, roasted Arabs, Mediterranean Arabs. You know, that's typical Israeli. Uh, I, I taste this one. Blind, I will, I will say Israeli. Mm -hmm. So uh, this compared to the uh, this is the Gili compared to the Ori, which has the same varietals but also has Merlot and also has Petit Verdot. Um, what do you what do you find is like the main differences between these two? I find this significantly more chewy and tangy. Yeah. Um, I think the Petit Syrah. Yeah, oh yeah. I think the Petit Syrah is much more apparent than this one. Like I'm like it's it's, it's grabbing me now mm. when I'm talking. Like there's there's a lot of tannin structure on this one, um, which could mean that it could have a little bit of time. You don't you can you could buy a couple bottles and store some away for a little while, um, and you know they could last for a little bit. Um, that's definitely the my main characteristic change between the two is that the tea is much more apparent in this one. All right, the Gito Adon is a again another variety another blend of four varietals. It's got Merlot, it's got Syrah, it's got Marcelan, it's got Petit Syrah. So uh, let's go ahead and give this a try. All the wines share Petit Syrah and Syrah, but this, uh, aside from the Levant, but this one has a couple of other things, Marcelon, which is very interesting. And let's see what that brings to this, uh, to this wine. Absolutely. Well, Marcelon is an interesting great variety, which is uh, becoming more and more popular in Israel. Uh, it's originally uh, a hybrid of two great varieties uh, that are uh, pretty much well known. One of them is very well known. It's Cabernet Sauvignon, the other one is Grenache, Grenache Noir, uh, Red Grenache. Um, and uh, it's really becoming popular in Israel because uh, it appears to be a very uh, uh, appropriate uh, variety for the, for the climate there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting band here uh, with the, the Tizira, the Sira. Uh, here really uh, bringing uh, a lot of the, uh, of the gaminess that we had uh, uh, in the previous wine. And, uh, but I, I get a lot of ripeness here. It's really very much fruit forward. Uh, a lot of fruit here uh, for the, the, the people who are more inclined towards the more restrained uh, oval wines, uh, looking for earthiness. This is uh, maybe not uh, going to be their favorite, uh, their favorite wine out of the three. Uh, but for those who are really uh, a big fan of the Israeli uh, right fruit style, go for it. Yeah, it's definitely the most fruit forward of them all. Uh, more of what you would expect as, as coming from Israel. Um, there's definitely a bit of a, a difference to it than your typical like Cabernet, you know, there's no Cabernet in here, but mm -hmm. your typical like fruit forward wine. Mm -hmm. Still got some interesting things going on, but of the three, like uh, Gabe said, this is the most, what you would expect. If you were tasting these blindly and you had to say which one's from Israel, you'd probably get it right 9 out of 10 times, if not 10 yeah. out of 10 times. As Gary Vaynerchuk <laughs> used to say when he used to do his wine library TV, old world fans, it's time for you guys to leave. This is a <laughs> right. full on fruit forward new world Israel, real, real Israel wine. Um, so if you like Israeli wines, you can pick it up. It's a testament to the winemaker. I mean, like to be able to kind of use more or less the same varietals and play with it in a way that you can extract different taste profiles is quite amazing. And all these wines are well balanced. You're really talking about the taste nuances between them, but they're all really nice. They got good structure, good balance, and. Um, I, I enjoy the ball. Uh, well, and I think it's an interesting point you're making about the, the talent of the winemaker here. The, of the three reds, the, the styles are very different. Um, the first one, even maybe perhaps a little experimental, um, and, but interesting. This is a little more traditional Israeli, um, you know, as, as Gabe said, you know, very ripe, uh, very fruit forward, very, you know, uh, sort of in your face in the, in the classic Israeli. Classic Israeli sense, um, and it's interesting that he, he's doing all three under one roof, as it were, and uh, and they are, you know, they are successful. And assuming that's what he's going for, right? That, then they work. And uh, it, I think it is interesting to kind of compare them this way. Um, I think the the first two maybe will have a, a slightly wider audience, unless you're really specifically interested in that kind of classic big. You know, in, uh, in your face, sort of macho Israeli thing. The others are a little bit more traditional, but um, it's very interesting. 
All right, and just to wrap, but we have four wines, we have four panelists here, if I can consider myself a panelist. Uh, we'll go ahead with everybody in terms of what their favorite wine is. Uh, we'll start with you, Ari, of the four. And I know you can't really compare white to red, but no, it's okay. you choose one. I, I love the Chardonnay. Uh, how yeah, about you, Gideon? Yeah, definitely the Chardonnay. How about you, Gideon? Yeah. I'm going to go with the Ori. I'm just a red <laughs> kind of guy. I No, not to the Chardonnay. I love the Levant. It's really good. Um, I just have to really like the Ori. I think. I think what really got me on that is is just the way that that pepper comes through. It's like fresh cracked pepper, and I, I just uh, I can't get away from that. Right?